For each test performed, clear and unambiguous acceptance criteria needs to be defined. This can take multiple forms. If a quantitative value is defined, if there is any tolerance, be sure to provide the range. Ideally, this is defined in requirements, but if not, needs to be defined in the protocol. Remember that appropriate personnel review and approve the protocol so such definition is acceptable, but again, should be considered a last resort for specifications. In some cases, a screenshot that the tester can compare against can be included in the protocol. Be sure to specify any portions which are in or out of scope in case there is, for example, time or date displayed, which would fail a bit-by-bit -bit comparison. The above example relies on the tester to make a pass or fail judgment based on what he or she sees. An alternate approach might be to have the tester take screenshots and provide objective evidence of passing steps for and judicious use of screenshots provides good supporting data. Gratuitous use of screenshots, though, can be a real headache. Each screenshot needs to be properly annotated to link the results to the test. It's easy to overdo screenshots, so be aware of the overhead. It's recommended to give the user explicit instructions when screenshots are called for. An example of how you could do that is shown on the screen. It's easy to tell that the values are properly added, given these are just integer values. If these were floating point values, or if the computation was more complex, for example, square roots, a second source of verification may be warranted. Should a second source be required, it would constitute test equipment and will be discussed below. This might be a better spot for a screenshot. It's not uncommon for testers to see what they want to see. After a full day of grueling testing, it's easy to not always pay close attention. Recording the result, as in step 7, is helpful and is a readily accepted method for recording objective evidence.